Hello. I'm going to do a full Fusion 360 machine simulation on our new Art Maker series. So I uploaded a Boss VF2 simulation and I put an orange vice on the table, which we learned through the Design Academy course on putting a vice in and putting a part in. We actually made this part. So we're Let's go, let's see, transparent. On this. There's our part underneath there. You can actually see, like, right in the machine that it's uh, clamped well and it's going to clear the vice draw. So, normally, we don't use hard draws in our shop. We use a step draw that's 200,000 deep. But this is good for simulation purposes. I will make that solid again. All right. Now stop on collision on. So, but if I blow this all the way out, it's pretty good as far as if I were to run the part now. It's machine simulation, just like you would see even in a real machine. You probably could not even get this close in a real machine. So this is doing the 3D adaptive here, going back and forth roughing. Probably not the most efficient, but that's all right. It's working its way around. So this is actually what's happening in your machine. When you do simulation, you're never really looking at how the part moves. It's always from the tool point of view. But this is really what's happening. I know the uh, tool looks like it's hanging out of the spindle, but it's pretty good for simulation purposes. That's really what's happening. But if I make the machine... Transparent, you can see through it. There's another view right there. And I can just make it show the base only. So this is kind of like up close and personal right here. We're still roughing right now, roughing. The green indicates that that surface is finished if you look over here it's uh nearest green is lines up the model blue is positive and red would mean we overcut let's unzoom this a little bit okay and go in here again all right so the, the time consuming part is going to be in that surface inside Right there, is there a 3D surfacing right there? If I pause this, pause. So this is actually pretty close to what it looked like. We had to learn how to jump over this area and machine all this out. So most of it is 2D contouring, except for in here. So we used two levels of adaptive, bigger tool and smaller tool to get way down in here. And we had to use three different uh, strategies in here to get, to get the smooth shape. And most of that you learn in the Design Academy course. And this model is in there. So you upload the model, take the course. And in this case, I have all the videos you can make the part. So. All right, but the simulation thing, this is good for show anybody how, to, how a CNC machine really, really works. All these, the table, the saddle, all this is all in motion. It has to be accurate to ten thousandths of an inch, point zero 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 one all day long, positioning and accurate, and even to create these 3D contours takes a a ton of g-code all right let me pull this back over here again well, now with machine simulation we can we can actually see a little bit better and there's another one here. that's tool simulation that's like same thing table moving but i like to see model moving all right so you can have the Fixture in there if you're in the 
you're in your setup. I'm going to go to setup. And fixture is on right there. So you can turn that off or on right there. So that's now not in the picture. Oops. But the machine is still there. So let's turn that. I have vices. And where is that? Use the machine. Oh, there we go. Turn it off. Now we have the part only. So on this one is edit, and we've identified, we actually selected the simulation machine versus this machine here, which has, uh, it has all the settings that line up to the post processor. So it's really two different animals. You got... Uh, Let's see. This would be this one, it's machine simulation. We have two different machines on the mill area. And we have all the settings we need for our machine here. So I actually have in here is edits. I set this all up. Uh, multi axis, we have one fourth axis. Coolant is air and flood. Post processing is already redirected at. The correct post processor any machining time modification our spindle is an 8100 spindle so sometimes if you are programming it above this rpm it's actually going to give you a warning when you use this uh, there's a lot of settings in here so i use all these processes so this is all part of that course so that's operation one and then we have operation two which is flipped over. And it's actually, we have to turn this 90 degrees because we're trying to hold it on the flat surface. So if you notice, the flat surfaces are on this side. But we like to have it the long way this way. I actually might change the orientation so we don't get confused. So this is a good, because you have two parallel surfaces and we have a flat surface underneath so we Actually, I don't have it actually aligned, but we were sitting right on that. And we use a work stop like right there. And we get all three coordinates that way. And we have more 3D machining on this side. So this is flat. We deburr, chamfer mill this, and we just 3D mill this in. We got uh, base mill, adaptive, scallop. And then chair for the top. And we had to play around a little bit to get it to navigate that area. All right, that's about it for me. Talk to you later.